Welcome to Crosstalk. I am so excited to be coming to you from the great nation of India. Today I'm going to introduce you to my friend Alfred Allen, who's been participating and helping us in the Today with God project into the languages of India and the surrounding areas. So as we, as we go through this program, I want to ask you to be praying about something. Just be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit might have you do. Perhaps you want to participate by getting involved in telling somebody you know about this project that might be able to use it in India. Or maybe it's something where you want to participate on going on a short-term trip to India. Maybe it's an opportunity for you to participate in something bigger than yourself in the form of helping us to create an app to provide the gospel message to the people of India or even better yet, more languages because we know that the world needs to hear the word of God in the tongue that their mother spoke, their mother tongue. So without any further ado, I want to introduce you to my friend, Alfred Allen. Alfred, it is so great to finally meet you in person. Finally, what a joy, Josh, what a we've, joy. We've been working on this project for years now. It seems like, it seems like this has been a 20 year project and I know we didn't start our efforts 20 years ago, but this overall project started 20 years ago, and the Lord did some really unique things in how he put us together. Um, I think you could probably tell some of the story, but for, for simplicity's sake, we had lots of trouble, and then we had more trouble, and then the Lord brought us to you. Right. And I'm curious, from your perspective, um, you're helping us with translation and getting it into the top. At this point, hopefully it will grow from here, but at this point, the top 11 languages, 12 of you include English, the tw top 12 languages of the entire nation of India. How does something like that make you feel when you're participating with the Today With God project in such a meaningful way? It is such an important thing, Josh, because uh, as you know, India has got a billion plus people and very soon we'll be the most populated country in the world. And we don't have audiovisual tools. And there are teeming millions who are lost, going to a uh, lost eternity. But there are no means of sharing the gospel with good audiovisual tools. And that's why to put a good program, which is so strong, uh, evangelical program, full of the gospel, to share it with the people of India in their own language is absolutely essential. And I'm so grateful to you all for bringing this program to India. And it's such a joy that my own countrymen will hear the gospel and see those who are literate and illiterate in, in a language where they can understand and the God's Holy Spirit may convict their hearts and they may receive the savior of the world in their hearts. You, when, when we first met and I got to know a little bit more about the work that you do, your ministry, I was rather impressed by the deep ties and the, the, the widespread network that you have of believers around this region to help participate when you get into a project like this. Tell me a little bit more, how did all this come to be? How did you get involved with translation work? And I mean, you're literally bringing the gospel message to 99% of the people of India through this project because of the, the language. How did you get into this? Uh, uh, Josh, the reason is that uh, we depended on people who are non-Christians to do our production work. And then we had enough of it because they don't understand. They don't have the spirit of God in them. They don't have that passion, that desire to obey the Great Commission. So finally, we started our own studio and God led us to write people who are born again Christians, believers, who have that same passion to share the gospel they became translators, well-trained, and then we got the right voice artists, the studios, the joined hands, and God, because it's God's project, it's God's work. So he brought in the people, and we praise God for people who are working, who are committed to uh, share the gospel and to participate as fellow co-laborers in this work. How, how, long, how long did this process take? Not the Today with God translation, how long did the process take for you to actually build this network and get to the point where you can do work like what we're doing with Today with God? Oh my, that's, that's a, a long story. But um, we are from advertising. Uh, we are graphic designers. And so in advertising, we did a lot of production work. 
and soon my father had this great burden to reach the unreached through audiovisual and he had gone to Lausanne, the first Lausanne and he met some people there. He came back and he started making short films and soon we worked for people like CBN and the BGA, the Billy Graham Association. We did some crusades for them, some TV programs and finally we started producing programs and dubbing it in different languages. So it was a, a process. I think there's a season for everything and God made it possible step by step, one day at a time, one step at a time and God brought things together. And I want to encourage our viewers, if they have that passion and desire and if they take the step of faith, God will help open doors for them and enable them if the intent is to please Him and to honor Him and to share the gospel and obey His great commission. Brother, that's, that's encouraging and I think that you're absolutely right that people can be encouraged that if they're, if they're working towards a passion, a calling, a vision yes. of doing the Lord's work, then all things are possible. That's Absolutely. exactly what Paul's meaning in Philippians. Absolutely. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Absolutely. Alfred, you, you started to talk a little bit about it's, it was a long time coming for the process hmm. for you to build the network of people right. that are helping you. But maybe you can kind of unpack that a little bit. What does that look like? We're, we're doing the top 11 languages. So uh, I'm going to probably butcher the names a little bit because uh, my, my, ac my accent is probably not I'll, very I'll good. I'll help right? you. Don't okay, worry. so we're doing obviously English, yeah. Hindi, Hindi, Telugu, Telugu, uh, Tamil, Tamil, Odia, Odia, Marathi, Marathi, Chi, like with the CH, is Marathi, it? Marathi, uh, Kannada, Kannada. Uh, Punjabi, Punjabi, Urdu, Urdu, uh, Gujarati, Gujarati, yes, um, Malayalam, Malayalam, yes. Did I say Tamil? You have said T Tamil. Okay. Uh, Bengali, Bengali, uh, Telugu, Telugu. Say? Okay, so I think I think we've said them all. Yes. Twelve languages. I only speak one language. How many languages do you speak? Uh, I can speak Hindi and English and understand a little bit Punjabi and Urdu. Okay. That's it. So how is it that you are helping to translate into all those languages? That's a good question. I don't speak in tongues for sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have uh, selected people who have a good Christian uh, standing and who are fine believers, born again, and they help us translate. So when the script comes, they first translate it and then we give it for checking and people check it out again Christians and once that is done and all the scripts are done uh, then we give it for production so these people over a period of time by trial and error by giving them different projects we came to know who's good and who's not good and as you know uh, television translation work is different than book translation so we have to stick to a time code so by God's grace God gave us the right people and over these about 17, 18, 19 years, uh, we have discovered some good talent who's helping us, who are passionate to share the gospel. When, when you mentioned the troubles that you've had hmm. with uh, you know, making sure that they're good Christian people doing the translations, it, it brought me back to some memories. You know, when, we, when we started this process of getting Today With God translated into different languages, hmm. um, we've had a lot of I guess I'd call it false starts hmm. because you'd start going down the road, there'd be this excitement and this, this hope about what God was going to be doing. And then, and then we just hit a roadblock. Hmm. Um, one of the times we got, you know, we, you always have to do like a back translation. Yes. Um, where you want to, okay, you, you tell me this is translated and that this is in this language, but I want to make sure it's a good version of that language. And so you let somebody else who speaks that language then go back and review it, and it's a back translation. Right. Sometimes a full back translation will actually translate it back into English to right. see if, it, if right. it keeps, right? right? And one of these experiences, we had gone back to look and see, and we realized that the translator was using a slang word that was not a, not a respectable word right. for the name of Jesus. Okay. And it was clearly a situation where the, mm. the translation work was not done by a believer. Yes. Then there's another experience where we ended up having the, the work done and we started the process of the back translation mm. with another company, obviously. Right. 
and the quality was coming back. It was so difficult to find anybody, and the mm. quality was coming back Correct. just very, very poor, almost like it was just a Google Translate in, some, in some ways. Yeah, that's uh, what people are doing nowadays, just to make a lot of money. But uh, Christian content cannot be done by Google. It has to have a spirit in it. You need to pray, you need to think about it, and the right sense has to come out in that language. And I think only people who are prayerful, who know yeah. the word of God, and God's spirit is in them, can only do this work well. Yeah. In the fear of God, obviously. And the, the network, I've been, by the way, so blessed mm -hmm. to have gone down this road with you for the last few years as we build this yes. relationship and, and this project. How many of the people that you're working with that are do, doing the translation work are in the city where you come from? Um, maybe just about one or two. Okay. I come from Delhi and majority of them in Bombay because that's where the industry is. And then in from South India, then different parts of India, especially the translators are there who work for us here. So it's, it's, a, it's quite a network spreading all Absolutely. over the nation. Absolutely. A and if you were to just guess, I know you, you might not know off the top of your head, how many people altogether would you say have been involved with this, this translation project that we're working on? Oh, there's voice artists, there yeah, yeah. sound engineers, and there are mixers, there are editors, and obviously translators, then people who check it and correct the translation. And a lot of people, uh, I've never counted them. <laughs> never count, but given thanks for them, for sure. Are we, are we talking 10 people, 50 no, no. people, 200 people? No, no, not so many. Maybe, uh, maybe about, for 11 languages, maybe about, maybe about, 30 to 40 people, perhaps. 30 to 40 people. Yeah, I've never counted. Around. Yes, on an, yeah, approximately. I, 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 uh, I hope that our viewers will be praying for those 30 or 40 people, that the Lord will bless them, that the Lord will move in their homes, Soon. and allow them to walk in blessings for the work that they're doing because it's yeah. uh, it's meaningful and they're they're uh, as my dad often says, laying up treasures in heaven. Yes, and Josh, I want to tell you that. Some of the translations happened during COVID time and when people were working from homes and yet God helped us do the translation, the corrections, the checkings and God helped us do some dubbings also during the COVID time. So uh, with the help of the Lord, uh, the Lord opened those doors and opened those studios and with masks and all that sanitation and all that we were able to do some dubbing and translation work. Excellent. So help our viewers understand why is it important? You, you work in translation, you've been doing translation stuff for many years with many ministries, yeah. and this is something that's been a big part, obviously, of the mm. last couple of years and will continue to be. Mm. Why is it so important? Why put the effort in to go to the level? H how's the impact uh, in your mind? What does that look like? You know, faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God, and if it's in your own language, it makes better sense. And as you know, uh, India, there are a lot of illiterate people also. Uh, education is coming up, no doubt, but still so many people can't read and write. So something, and there are a lot of oral learners in India. And if you're giving something to them in an audiovisual format, in their own language, which they understand, in their own mother tongue, it connects better, any day. Better than a subtitle, better than anything, it connects better, because it's their language. And they know that God loves them in their own language and they hear the gospel in their own language and they can understand that language. And what greater joy it is uh, when we see people responding uh, to the gospel in their own language. Language plays a very important part. And, uh, and really, Josh, I'm so happy you're putting this in so many languages because it's so essential, so very essential for people. As you know, the project, it's far from done. Hmm. Uh, t today, as we're speaking, mm. we've completed the project in the Gospel of John yes. and the Who is Jesus project. Correct. Um, these are kind of like the flagship initial productions that we did. Mm. And uh, the Lord was very gracious to provide yes. the provision yes. of the funding that yes. allowed us to do that. And together we were able to accomplish something yes. that I believe is going to be very meaningful. Yes. yes. Um, we, have to, we have to raise more capital. We have Absolutely. to raise more funding because... Yes. We still need to translate Luke and Matthew and Acts. There's so many more projects right. that are underway and that, that we need to come up with some funding for because it's, it's important. And mm. um, 
I guess I'll ask a few questions around that. How long do you believe it will take to produce all of the Today with God project? What's left is Matthew, Acts, and Luke. Hmm. Theatrical released, word for word. It's the, it's, it's the word of God living and active in the Today with God form. Yes. How long will it take for us to get all of those produced and translated into those same 11 languages? Uh, if our audience is going to pray on their knees, and if we have the support and God's uh, special grace, I think in about a year's time we'll be able to finish it. Maybe about 12 to 15 months we can finish it by the grace of God. Yeah. What's, in, okay, what's the impact of that? I mean, more specifically, how do you, if, if you could just prophesy with your eyes open, <laughs> how would you envision testimonies are gonna look like as a result of this project? You know, as you know, Josh, India doesn't have much of audiovisual content, which is gospel oriented. The Jesus film was there and a few other things. Uh, but th we desperately need good evangelical gospel programs and uh, films and audiovisual uh, productions. And this is one of them. And if there is one in the language, why not? And once it's distributed amongst uh, varied churches um, in different languages, and people receive the word gladly and God's Holy Spirit moves in a wonderful way because God loves India like any other country and uh, it's the seat of so many religion and there's so much of uh, witchcraft and evil and, and demonic activity here and when the word of God comes there and that will dispel the darkness and we believe many may turn to the Lord and be saved it's our great joy and earnest uh, plea that we beseech uh, our viewers and everyone here that they may join hands in this great work of the Great Commission to reach the unreached. India has 70% of the unreached people groups. 70% of all unreached people groups live in India. Uh, you can check it out. And so there is a great need. 2023 years have passed and still 70% of the people who have never heard the gospel live in India. So it's a great need. And, uh, you know, as if there was a call for Macedonia, there's a call from India for people to come forward, contribute, join hands, be co-laborers in this great commission work. Uh, amen. Yes. Amen. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's uh, oftentimes with television, especially Christian television, there's, there's a lot of requests for funds. Mm. Yeah. And... Uh, there's a lot of good work that's being done in the world. Yes. There's so much more that needs to be done. Yes. Um, I'm proud of the fact that we run lean. Mm. Yes. I, I'm proud of the fact that our ministry, um, our ministry is not, not living luxurious lives Correct. because of ministry dollars. Mm. Uh, when you think of the return on, on investment yes. for a project like this, mm. it's difficult to match. Mm. It's difficult to match the return, the spiritual return on investment mm. that comes from providing the Word of God yes. in a dramatic, yes. visual, yes. word for word representation, right. audio video, yeah. the way this project yes. does. And I, I'm proud of that. Yes. And Josh, just to let you know, the Indian society, the Indian culture loves drama, loves storytelling. Bollywood is here. And if you give anything dramatic, it's an emotional uh, society, an emotional people we are. So we really fall for it, emotionally. And uh, if you tell them, tell a story dramatically uh, in, in audiovisual, it, there's a great impact, especially in India. Yeah. We, are, we don't need to do any research. You know what Bollywood movies do for India. Yeah. And the world. So um, we've spent some time together mm. and you've seen how the project is getting used by mm -hmm. the local church, by parachurch ministries, mm -hmm. by in, in Sunday schools and mm -hmm. uh, home churches and mm -hmm. you know ev evangelism in mm -hmm. all sorts of different arenas. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think this differs from stuff you've seen in the past? If I can ask it like that. I mean, you've been involved with ministry yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that sets this apart or that makes this unique in your mind? You know, what is unique is the way uh, each segment is explained before and after. And then you see the visual. You see the dramatic uh, portions of the 
of the visual bible so what i feel is the way it is explained my randy and the way uh, it is made easy for people to understand the context and the meaning and what the lord jesus spoke i think that has a special edge uh, where people don't have to think but they get it so easy just yeah. like the lord he spoke parables he made it so simple for the children and baffled the pharisees also but here it is so simple communication has to be simple and that's what the hallmark of these uh, programs are excellent excellent <laughs> alfred we 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 haven't had a uh, enough time in my opinion to be able to really unpack some of this project uh, we've enjoyed the last few days together and yes. getting to just dream and think about what all god's going to do and yes. meet with various believers around mm -hmm. uh, the area but i i believe that there's more there's more to do yes. i would ask i would ask humbly that if you care about the lost if you care about making an impact in this world if if being a part of something bigger than yourself is of interest to you or if it excites you i beg of you to consider participating in this project specifically we need to raise about $250,000 which is a big number for our ministry but we believe so so much in our very hearts that it's important that money is going to go towards translating the remainder of the project into the top 11 languages of india it's also going to go towards helping us create an app because it, it would go on the phone and it's a lot more accessible for people and something that everybody has everybody's got a phone and it's just a matter of getting the content on that phone we also want to prepare a, a an outward facing website for today with god so that people that come to the website can be able to engage the content in their language in their mother tongue and this is all very expensive and so i'm going to boldly yet humbly ask that you consider praying and participating with us in this project help us whatever the lord might might lay on your heart that's sufficient for us what what's not okay in my opinion is if we're not even willing to ask God what he would have us do. He's he's blessed us so much and he didn't do that so that we could just keep it to ourselves. He blesses us so that we could participate in expanding the kingdom for him, the kingdom of the Lord. So I want to encourage you. Pray, ask the Lord, seek seek with your heart what would he have you participate with regarding this project. And I believe that you'll be blessed. Alfred, do you have any final words before we conclude the program that you'd like to share? Josh, it's a simple logic. The harvest is plenty. The laborers are very few. Less than what, 3-4% Christians, uh, about a billion people here. But you know what? The laborers are few, but the laborers don't have tools also. And we need tools. We desperately need tools to, to evangelize and to share the gospel. So I beseech and urge that uh, we get these programs in the languages so that God's people go to the, the last mile and they yes. share the gospel. They spread the fire of the gospel and people seeing and hearing the gospel may open their hearts and be saved. And, and Josh, there is rejoicing in heaven. Those who will contribute, they'll be part of that great festival of rejoicing. It gladdens the heart of God even if one prodigal comes back. And but let that prodigal hear. Let him hear. Let him hear that God loves him. And God is waiting to receive him back. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to I wanna invite you back next time. Until then, pray. Ask the Lord how you might participate. I can assure you, every single dime that you send for this project mm -hmm. is going straight to India. Straight to India. There's nothing taken off the top. It's all going to the gospel in India. So give us a call, 1-800-688-3422. You can give online at the website crosstalk.org. You can also find us on social media. And of course, you can always, always send contributions through the mail. And the, the address is on the screen, but uh, it's P.O. Box 2528, Cedar Hill, Texas, 75106. And until next time, may the Lord richly bless you. Shalom and God bless.